I was at a British pub, uh, and here's the problem with being an American traveling now. You go to a foreign country, people accuse you for policies our government has that they happen to disagree with, as if you were at the meeting. <laughs> I was at a British pub, this guy gets in my face, shaved head, no neck, yo, yank. How come you won't sign the Kyoto Protocol? <laughs> I'm just having a beer. I didn't, I didn't know anything about the uh, Toyota <laughs> Corolla Recall. <laughs> Do you have a Toyota? I don't know. Then I got accosted by a hyper-literate Brit. This is awful. You get buried in syllables. This guy, skinny guy, you know. Excuse me, sir. I was ruminating over the prospect that the Americans as a peoples have indeed become addicted to petroleum. <laughs> uh, uh. You refuse to look for alternatives, and you will undertake any measure to acquire the substance of your addiction. I believe this suggests your relationship with the commodity has come far deeper than what a market value would naturally bear. <laughs> I just came to look at castles. <laughs> I love that term, addicted to petroleum. You know, it kind of makes sense if you look at our history of petroleum. It's a lot like drug use, you know. If there was ever a Gasaholics Anonymous meeting, every story would be the same. Like, I'm an American, I'm a Gasaholic. <laughs> How'd it start? Oh, I don't know, I guess it began a long time ago when I started burning wood. <laughs> For heat, really. Everyone was doing it, you could grow it yourself. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea it would be a gateway fuel to the harder stuff. <laughs> then I got a hold of coal, which was a wood concentrate, you know. You couldn't grow it, you had to get your coal rocks from a dealer, but man. <laughs> Once you flamed a coal rock, there was no going back to wood. Woo! <laughs> Then I got a hold of oil, which is a liquid coal that had to be freebased with a refinery into <laughs> this golden serum called gasoline. <laughs> I just used a little at first to get me going where I needed to go, you know. Before I knew it, I had a dealer on every street corner who would hook me up when I ran out. <laughs> then one day I woke up, my dealer had become president. No way! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, then the party started. We were pipelining it from here to there, getting the good foreign stuff, you know. <laughs> Everything was cool till they tried to cut off my supply and I frickin' snapped. I was like, whoa, 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 step away from my stuff. <laughs> oh, you can say hello to my little friend! <laughs> <laughs> That's when I knew I had a problem. So they got me on this 10% ethanol program right now. <laughs> 10 years, I'm supposed to be clean and solar. <laughs> All right, well, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it.